Hello and welcome. I am Raghav and today we are going to learn from scratch how to set up iOS automation testing on Mac OS and this is going to be very easy and very interesting and do not worry if you have no prior knowledge on this topic I will go very basic step by step. So we need Java, we need Appium, we need Xcode, Xcode command line tools, web driver agent, real devices or simulators and then we need an IDE to create our project. So let's get started and step number one is we should have Java on our system and you can install Java JDK. So I will go to my terminal. I have pressed command spacebar to bring this spotlight search and I will say terminal and here I will say Java space hyphen version. So this should give me my Java version and you can see Java 8 is set up. I can also check the compiler version by saying Java C space hyphen version and this shows me the compiler version of Java. Now in case it is not set up, you can go to my website which is automationstepbystep.com and you can go to the online courses here and here you will find a tile for Java. So if you go, if you scroll down, you will find this programming section where we have Java and this will take you to the YouTube playlist on my channel and here you will find a video on how to install or update Java on Mac so just in case you are having any issues with Java you can watch this I will also provide this link here and all these notes will be available to you with this video so you can check this in the description section of the video and then once you have Java you can install homebrew so homebrew is the package manager for java and we can use homebrew to install other packages and again to get homebrew you can just go to google and say homebrew and it will take you to this website of homebrew which is brew.sh you can go here and it will take you to homebrew so you can see this is the missing package manager for mac os and to install homebrew you just have to run this command on terminal so using this command you can install homebrew so I will also make this available in the notes this is the command and also this website URL so it is very easy for you to follow so this is the second step and then third step is we can install node.js and npm so now we can use brew to install node and once you install node npm will be available so you can just install node and once you have this if you say node space hyphen v and npm space hyphen v you should get the version of node and npm now in my case i already have it if you do not get the version you can just use brew install node or you can go back to the online courses link on my website and you will find a course on mobile testing and apm here so in this playlist on apm you will find this video on how to install Appium on Mac OS. I have explained how to set up node in this video and also how to install Appium. So step number three installing node and step number four installing Appium are already covered in this video just in case you do not have it you can watch these videos here. So I will also provide the link here. So you can install Appium by using npm install minus g Appium on the terminal or you can also get Appium desktop client which is optional. So either of these two you can get and this is explained in this video. So this is step number four and once you have done these four steps then we come to Xcode. Now step number five is we have to get Xcode and Xcode is the development environment on Mac and we use it uh, to create iOS apps or to automate iOS apps and you find all the resources, tools and files that we require for creation and uh, automation of iOS apps. So to get Xcode you can go to your app store. There are multiple ways you can go to app store and in the app store you can search for Xcode. So you can go here and say Xcode and search for it and it will show you Xcode and you can see this is here. Now in case you do not have it on your system you will have a link to get here in my case because I already have I am just getting an update link and in most of the uh, latest Mac operating system and Mac devices Xcode is already present so you can check you 
might already have Xcode if you do not have you can just get it from here and Xcode is a very heavy file it is like multiple GB's a few GB's file and it can take some time to uh, set up on your system it can take several hours so in case you do not have Xcode you have to wait to get Xcode so you can get it from here or you can also go to your browser and you can just say download Xcode and you can go to this site Apple developer and you can download Xcode from here so this is you can get it from here or you can also go to download for Apple developers website so this is download for Apple developers and you can go here and again you can get Xcode from here so any of these will work so here you can just now in case you do not have an Apple ID you can create an Apple ID I will just show you how to do that uh, you can go here and here if you go to if you go to this App Store so let me just go to App Store again and here if you go to quick links uh, you will see this account so you can go here and here in case you do not have an app Apple ID you will have a link to create an Apple ID and you can get it from here so you can do that but the straightforward way is just go to App Store and get Xcode so once you have Xcode then we go to the next step which is step number six where we need to install Xcode command line tools and we just have to run this command on terminal so I will go to my terminal and here I will just copy and paste this command and run this now here it is saying it is already installed because I had run this command earlier in your case if you are doing it for the first time it will run and install the Xcode command line tools so this was step number six step number seven is we have to create Apple ID now in case you have already created earlier like I showed you it is okay or you can go to Xcode and then create an Apple ID so now I will open Xcode on my system so this is Xcode app and once Xcode is open we will go to the preferences so this is Xcode now once you open your Xcode let me just show you here this is the Xcode window so here we have options to get started with a playground create a new Xcode project or clone existing project and here it shows you some of your projects now in your case if you have started for the first time this will be empty so do not worry you will just see this window and now you can go to here menu Xcode and go to preferences and here you can go to uh, accounts and then you can create an Apple ID in my case it is already created so you can create it here or you can also click on this plus button to create more IDs so if you click here you can just select Apple ID and continue and then you can create an Apple ID which is free so you can do it like this and once you have an Apple ID created uh, we need to install Carthage now this is required to launch web driver agent project that I will show you in the next step but for now just say brew install Carthage on the terminal so I will again go to my terminal and I will clear everything and say brew install Carthage so with the help of homebrew it will install Carthage on this system and you can also just search for Carthage so this is very uh, good practice that if you do not know the usage of any of these tools or utilities you can always go to Google and search for what is a Carthage so I should say brew uh, install Carthage or yeah so here I will get a github page for Carthage and you can see this is says it's simple decentralized dependency manager and you can find all the details here why do we need it and you can see this documentation and installation steps are also given here just in case you face any issues you can always go here and read it so now here let us see and looks like this is done so we now have Carthage on our system now the next step is 
we have to initialize webdriver agent project so now on terminal we have to go to the webdriver agent folder now this will be available in your appium folder wherever you have installed appium now if you have installed appium through desktop client you can go to this location so if you go to this location so all these notes will be available to you just in case you find it difficult you can copy this from the notes or description I will go to the finder and I will press command shift and G key on my keyboard that is command shift and G and I will paste this location and I will say go and you can see it is here so this is the webdriver agent project which is present here in your appium folder so in your application appium.app contents resources app node modules appium node modules appium xui test driver and webdriver agent so this is in case you are using a uh, appium desktop client in case you have installed appium through npm like npm install minus e appium uh, you will find it here so this is the location so here again i will go to my finder and press command shift and g key on my keyboard and i will get it from here now looks like this is not appium uh, is not installed uh, from the command line or npm so i will just say npm install minus g appium quickly so that it installs appium so let us just wait for this to get installed And while this is getting installed, I should also show you uh, XUI test driver. So this is what we use in iOS automation. So this is for used for iOS and this is the APM page for that. So APM's primary support for automating iOS app is via the XUI test. And here you can read all the documentation just in case you want to read and let us just wait for this appium installation and sometimes it is very interesting to see the logs we usually skip the logs so you can see when we install appium it installs a chrome driver and you can see all this is for chrome driver and then you will find a cellandroid driver so it installed a cellandroid driver it checks for the java is installed so this is required so in case you do not have java it will not install appium and then uh, you will see here it also installs appium windows driver but because we are on mac so it is saying not installing winamp driver since did not detect a windows system and now this is done so now i will just say appium minus v to get the appium version and you can see appium 1.13.0 is installed and now i can go back to this step go to the folder of appium which is installed through npm and if I go to my finder command shift G and go here let me just see this so this is user local bin lib and I will just again try it out so it's not going here let me go to the terminal and I will say which appium so this should show me the location of appium and i can try it out here i will say here cd and i will use this user local lib note modules appium then again node modules and then we have appium xcui test driver yes it is here and then web driver agents yes so this is the location the finder was having some difficulty i will again check and yes now it is able to go here so yes we have to go to this location and then we have to run the command mkdir-p resources webdriver agent bundle so after going to this location so make sure that you have changed directory to this location and then say this command 
and after this we have to run this command which is scripts bootstrap dot sh minus t and this command will run only once you have Carthage installed so if you do not have Carthage this will throw some error so I will again run this and here I am getting some issue it is saying no JSON object could be decoded uh, so if I look at the logs I do not get any other information so this can happen uh, for the Appium version as well so if I see my Appium version which I have just installed it is 1.13.0 let me try to uninstall and install another version so I will say npm uninstall minus g appium this should uninstall appium from the system and then I will install another version of appium so you might also get this error and you can uh, troubleshoot like this so if I say appium minus v appium is not installed and now I will say npm install minus g appium and to install a specific specific version I will say 1.12.1 1 uh, so this is what I need uh, there is some issue I will exit from here and I will open a new command line or a new terminal and I will say npm install minus g appium at 1.12.1 you might have to try with some different versions so I believe this is a stable version so we should be able to run our command with this appium version and it is now installing and yes so this should be done in a moment and it is installing chrome driver now if you are going to the uh, location where you have installed your appium desktop client and doing the same steps that is absolutely okay so you can do that way as well so again it is now getting cylindroid driver and yes this is done some more steps are left yes it's not installing WinApp driver since this is not a Windows system and it's done so if I now clear this and say appium minus v I have the version 1.12.1 now I will again go to the location of web driver agent and I will again run the command mkdir and this resources and now I will run the command scripts bootstrap minus dot sh minus t and looks like this should work now so let us wait for this to get completed and yes so this is required when we run and build our web driver agent project we will need this in case you do not do this you will get an error and it will tell you that you need to do this uh, before you can build and run your web driver agent project so now this is done and we are done with this step we are done with step number nine which is initialize web driver agent project and now we can open the project in Xcode so you can go to the location wherever you have your uh, project so this is the same location actually the same location which is this one this location where we were running all these commands you can physically go on the finder you can physically go on this location web driver agent and here you will find this web driver agent dot xcode project and you can right click and open with xcode so we have to open this project with xcode and you can see this is now opening in xcode so you can see all this project is loaded and here you can see this is the project 
and if you have any issues you will find it here so you can see all these things are here so if I click on any of these warnings I'm getting all these warnings I will say perform changes so everything is okay now and if I see this there are some other things which I will just see there is no runtime issues uh, we have not yet built the project and this is the project so we have opened the project in Xcode and we have done this now so this is again the same location where you will find this project that we have already seen so you have done step number 10 now and now under the Xcode project under this project we have to select these targets webdriver agent lib and webdriver agent runner and then we have to go to the general tab and select select automatically manage sign in so I will show you if you go here if you go here and I will select this webdriver agent lib so here you will get the targets so here I will select webdriver agent lib under the targets and then go to the general tab and here I will say automatically manage sign in and enable automatic and here I have to select a team now you if you do not see any team you can always go to add account and you can give your Apple ID and then create a new team in my case it is already created so I will just select this team here and that's it it's done now again I will do the same thing I will go to webdriver agent runner and do the same thing I will select webdriver agent runner in the targets and go to the general tab here general tab here and then I will say under sign in I will say automatically sign in I will say enable automatic and here I will select the team and let us see what happens now so here I'm getting this error failed to create provisioning profile the app id com.facebook.webdriveragentrunner cannot be registered so if you are getting this something similar here you can go to build settings and under build settings you will see this product bundle identifier and you will see this is given here and you can change it and give any random name here so for example I will just change this to com.raghav dot web driver agent runner and now I will go back to general and let us see so this is again showing me the same thing I can say enable automatic and use my team and I will say try again it is still showing me the issue I will do this again I will go here I have already changed it you can give any random name here actually and go to general and looks like now it is okay so yes now it is okay we have we don't have any issues or errors here so this is done and after this so I have also mentioned this here because we usually get this error if you get this error you have to manually change the bundle identifier which I have shown you now we can do a clean build and run of the project so if you go to product you will find this clean and the keyboard shortcut is uh, shift command and K key so you can click clean here so you can see clean succeeded again I will go to product and I will say build and it will now build the project so you can see it is compiling the project now and if we have build succeeded we can then run our project so the first time it can take some time because we are doing it for the first time here so yes this is yes so you can see build succeeded so now we have this project ready now if you go here if you uh, select if you go to products folder and you will see there is a app here so this is a iOS app 
uh, you can also create new apps in um, Xcode however we should not be worrying about creating the apps because we are doing testing and while you are doing testing on any iOS app you will get a dot ipa file or a dot app file so here you can see this is a dot app file and this is a test app and these files dot ipa or dot app we will get from the dev team so the dev team will provide you the file and using that file you can get the application and you can do the testing in case of android we had a dot apk file and we have seen it in the earlier sessions in case of ios we have dot ipa or dot app app file so i will just select this here you can see this is here as well i can select this here and then you can see i can run it on any of these devices or simulators so here if you have any device connected to your mac operating system you will find the device here in my case i do not have but i have these simulators that i can use so you can either directly go from here or you can just select your app and then you can select a simulator here so you can see any of these simulator will work and you can also go to windows you can go to window menu and here you will find devices and simulators you can go here and here it will show you a list of all the devices all the real devices in my case i do not have it you can also click this plus button to add a device now it is saying no device found because i have not connected any device if you have connected your device with a usb cable you can find it here in case you are using a real device when you connect you will find an option you will find a prompt to trust the connection you can trust it and then you can go to the settings and ios developer and also you can enable a xui test there so here i do not have anything so i will go to simulators and i have the simulators if i go to any of the simulators you can see i am getting the identifier so this is the udid that we will need in case we are doing scripting in the framework and you can also click on this plus button to add more simulators so here you can add more simulators and i will just cancel it for now and just to check it i will use iphone 8 and i will say run you can also press command r or you can click on this run button and let us see what happens i have some warnings but that should be fine it should open the our simulator it says build succeeding succeeded and it is now launching the simulator so you can see this is coming up and yes you can see the simulator so you can use the simulator you can see all these buttons also we can use and then the ui also we can use here it is starting the simulator the first time it will take some time but then it will eventually start it and this is just for example uh, in the project we do not need to do it this way we can directly give the id of the simulator and it will start and i will show you that so this is how you can get it also if you want to get the udid so you can see so here you can finally check everything is running fine by using this code or you can also do a run from here that we have already done so here if you go to your command line or terminal i will open a new tab by pressing command t on my keyboard and here i will say so this is the command instruments minus s devices this will give you all the devices and simulators on your system and you can also get the id of those devices so let us just wait and if you are working with a real device uh, you can also use this ios deploy so you can just get npm install ios deploy and then say ios deploy minus c on the terminal to get the details of the real device so you can see this command has given us all the devices which are present in this system including real devices and emulators and every emulator or simulator has this id so it is called the, these are all simulators and you can also get the ids from here okay so you can see it has started the app and here now we also have this application so this is the test application which was there in this project which is integration app and it has started this so you can now start it like this and if you go to the simulator window so this is simulator if you go to the window you can 
increase or decrease the size and then if you go to hardware you can uh, see orientation and home block and everything and here you can see a device list and you can also start other devices so you can start uh, Apple watch or iOS or Apple TV any devices you can start from here as well okay so this was the step and this is a command that you can use to also test from command line and you just have to change the UDID with the device UDID for example if I go to the command if you go to the terminal and I see this is iPhone 6 and this is the UDID of iPhone 6 I can copy this and here this is the UDID I will just use this command and in place of UDID I will give this and I will copy this go to my command line and run this and this should start the simulator so you can see this is running on iPhone 6 plus and you will find a simulator starting so you can see iPhone 6 is starting here this is iPhone 8 and this is where we have started iPhone 6 so this is good to run this command so you will see you do not have any errors in the setup so at the end you will see some test cases and test suite messages so to verify everything is working fine the first time it takes some time so you can see it is taking some time because we are doing it for the first time and this is running fine until now so let's wait for the final message where we can see some test execution or test suite and test case messages that will uh, verify that our setup is correct and then we can start using iOS automation with APM so simulators are a little slower than real devices and yes it has finally started so this is iPhone 6 plus and yes this is working fine so looks like everything is okay and yes you can see we have got this message so this is what uh, I was waiting for so you should get something like this uh, start test at this and set up and test suite all test started at this particular time and this started and passed everything is fine so if you get a final message and information like this that means everything is working fine and now your Mac is ready for doing automation on iOS devices and now we can start creating our project so now the next step is we have to uh, start creating our project and there are some desired capabilities that we have to add we have already seen this in the earlier sessions when we worked with Android devices similarly we will have to set up some desired capabilities and we can open Eclipse and create our project but before we do that here are some references that I will provide you in the notes and you can watch uh, these things and you can go through these references and then in case you are working with a real device there are some other tools and utilities that you can also get so we have authorized iOS this is a utility which pre-authorizes to run UI automation scripts on iOS devices we have this lib iMobile device again this is uh, a library to communicate with iOS devices and then we have this iDevice installer or iOS deploy so iOS deploy we have already seen here in case you want to get the details of the real device you can get this and here you can get iDevice installer or if this does not work you can get iOS deploy and this again uh, iOS WebKit debug proxy this is to access web views on real devices so this is some extra information and this will also be available in the notes and now 
the project creation part I will do in the next video in the next session so we, we will start a fresh project on Eclipse Java and we will start automation on iOS devices on a Mac operating system so I hope this session was very useful for you while you are doing this setup you might face some issues which I have not faced whenever you face any issues always copy your message or copy your error and go to Google and search for it and you will always find information and you will be able to troubleshoot and in case you find something that you are not able to solve or troubleshoot or get to answer you can always put that in the comment section below this video and I will try to help you so I hope this session was very useful for you do subscribe to this channel to keep receiving more videos on automation testing DevOps and CI and I will meet you in the next session thank you for watching